In this series, we'll embark on a voyage that transcends time, a quest fueled by the allure of legends and the promise of unimaginable wealth. With each passing wave, we'll delve into stories that have woven themselves into the fabric of history and folklore. These are the tales of pirates who sailed with secrets, weaving behind cryptic clues. Our journey leads us through uncharted waters, where the line between myth and reality blurs. We'll navigate the pages of history, following the trails of the notorious Henry Every. Join us on a journey where myth and reality intertwine, tracing the audacious raid that etched Every's name into the annals of piracy. The journey takes us from the bloodstained decks to secret negotiations on far-off islands. Discover how Every's cunning and enigmatic maneuvers kept him one step ahead of authorities, leaving historians in awe of his elusive legacy. As time passed, rumors and theories swirled about Every's fate. Did he meet a tragic end or simply vanish into obscurity? In the year 1695, the pirate captain Henry Every set his sights in the Grand Mogul fleet, a convoy of 25 ships loaded with treasures beyond imagination. The fleet was en route to the Indian city of Surat, carrying the riches of the Mogul Empire. Every ship, the Fancy, joined forces with five other pirate vessels, forming a pirate fleet. Every was elected as the admiral of this group. As the Mogul fleet sailed through the Straits of Bab el Madib, Every's pirate flotilla gave chase. The massive Ganji Savi, a ship of unparalleled opulence, and its escort, the Fateh Muhammad, carrying enormous treasures, were the targets. The pirates aimed to capture these vessels and claim the fabled riches they held. A fierce battle ensued as the pirates closed in on the Ganji Savi. Despite its formidable defenses, the Mughal ship fell victim to Every's audacious assault. Cannon fire roared, muskets cracked, and chaos reigned as the pirates overwhelmed the crew. Ultimately, the Ganji Savi's immense wealth fell into the hands of Every's crew. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a reddish glow over the blood-stained decks, the pirates emerged victorious. Its treasures, once a symbol of the Empire's opulence, were now the spoils of the pirates' conquest. The loot from Ganji Sawi, the greatest ship in the Mughal fleet, totaled somewhere between 200,000 and 600,000 pounds, including 500,000 gold and silver pieces. All told, it may have been the richest ship ever taken by pirates a fortune beyond reckoning that testified to the audacity and success of Every's raid. The gleam of gold and sparkle of precious gems reflected the extent of their victory, igniting dreams of boundless luxury and power among the pirates. The audacious plunder of the Mughal Emperor's treasure ship had far-reaching consequences that reverberated across continents and threatened the very foundation of English trade in India. As the East India Company was still grappling with the aftermath of the Child's War, the extraordinary raid orchestrated by Every further exacerbated their predicament. By 1695, the East India Company had witnessed a staggering decline in its annual imports, plummeting from a peak of 800,000 pounds in 1684 to a meager 30,000 pounds, a dire circumstance that underscored the grave challenges it faced. The news of Every's attack on the Mughal pilgrims aboard the Ganji Sawi spread like wildfire, kindling a fury that transcended borders. The act was viewed as sacrilegious, a blasphemous violation of the Hajj that initiated intense outrage. In response, Itamad Khan, the local Indian governor, swiftly apprehended English subjects in Surat, detaining them under close surveillance. The arrested individuals became pawns in a tense chess game, punished not only for their compatriots' marauding actions, but also for their safety amidst the furious backlash of the local populace. The emperor, incensed by the audacity of Every's attack, wielded his authority to retaliate against the English presence. He ordered the closure of four of the East India Company's vital factories in India and imprisoned its officers while contemplating an armed assault on the English stronghold of Bombay aimed at forever expelling them from Indian shores. To mollify the vengeful emperor and salvage what remained of their precarious position, the East India Company pledged to indemnify the financial losses incurred. Parliament took an unprecedented step by branding Every and his crew as enemies of all mankind. The government's response was to issue a 500-pound bounty on Every's head, accompanied by a tempting offer of full pardon for anyone who divulged his whereabouts. This marked the inception of a relentless global manhunt, the first of its kind in recorded history, and the resulting chase for Every and his crew spanned oceans and traversed continents. 
Every's escape and the vanishing fortune from the plundered mogul ship paint a picture of a cunning figure who skillfully evaded capture while his ill-gotten gains slipped through the fingers of those who sought to reclaim them. Following his raid in the Ganjisawi, Every's whereabouts became a subject of intense global scrutiny. Despite the massive manhunt launched by authorities, Every managed to remain one step ahead, shrouded in mystery and intrigue. After the attack, Every's ship Fancy reached St. Thomas, where a portion of the treasure was sold. Fancy eventually anchored at Royal Island, Afalutra, in the Bahamas, where Every's crew negotiated an agreement with the island's governor, Sir Nicholas Trott. Under the guise of Henry Bridgman, Every offered a substantial sum in exchange for harbor access and confidentiality about the crew's activities, effectively eluding immediate suspicion. Trot, aware of the island's vulnerability and the potential benefits of Fancy's presence, consented to the agreement. Every and his crew unloaded a substantial bribe, including ivory tusks, gunpowder, firearms, and more. The ship's wealth, including foreign minted coins, was too conspicuous to ignore, but Trot professed ignorance of their true identities. The pirates, with their identities hidden, roamed freely in Nassau's taverns, seemingly blending in with the local populace. In the ensuing months, Fancy's crew grew disillusioned with the Bahamas' sparsely populated islands, where spending their ill-gotten riches proved challenging. As the Royal Navy and the East India Company's pursuit escalated, Trot faced a dilemma. He had to either apprehend Every or risk exposing his collaboration with the pirates. He chose to tip off the authorities but also informed Every, allowing him to escape with most of his crew. In a calculated move, Every sowed confusion by disseminating conflicting stories about his future plans. Every's crew of 113 swiftly responded by orchestrating their escape from the Bahamas. They vanished from the island, leading behind only 24 captured men, five of whom faced execution. Every himself disappeared without a trace. His final words to his crew were a tapestry of conflicting stories about his intended destination, likely designed to divert pursuers and ensure his own elusiveness. Following his escape, theories emerged about Every's subsequent actions. Unable to secure a pardon, it's been suggested that he and some of his crew headed to North America, while others remained in the West Indies. Every and around 20 men aboard the sloop Seaflower set sail for Ireland in late 1696. Unloading their treasure, they aroused suspicion, leading to the capture of two crew members. Remarkably, Every managed to evade capture once again. The ultimate fate of Henry Every remained shrouded in mystery. Various accounts and speculations have been proposed over the centuries. Notably, Charles Johnson introduced the idea that Every died in poverty in Devon, cheated out of his wealth by Bristol merchants. However, this assertion lacks evidence. Others propose that Every changed his name and spent his remaining years peacefully in Devon, ultimately passing away on June 10, 1714. Yet the reliability of such accounts is questionable, as the sources are considered dubious or speculative. As the years passed, supposed sightings of Every continued, although none were substantiated. In 1709, a memoir claimed that Every became a pirate king, ruling over a pirate utopia in Madagascar, sparking a wave of romanticized accounts. These narratives, although widely believed by the public, lacked factual basis. If you want to learn more about Libertatia, I made a video about it a while back as well. With each passing year, Every's story became more legendary and more obscure regarding the truth behind his final days. Despite the numerous tales and speculations, no reliable information emerged regarding Every's activities or his whereabouts after his escape in June 1696, leaving his ultimate fate unknown. In the shadowy realm of history, the legend of Henry Every stands as a testament to the audacity and cunning of a pirate who defied the odds, evaded capture, and vanished. From the daring plunder of the Mughal fleet to the enigmatic circumstances of his escape and the fading echoes of his ultimate fate, Every story continues to captivate and intrigue. The allure of hidden treasures, the thrill of the chase, and the tantalizing possibility of unearthing lost riches have fueled our journey into the heart of this unsolved mystery. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, please let me know in the comments. Before you set sail for your next destination, please like this video. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, and your engagement fuels our journey and keeps the winds of curiosity blowing. I want to thank my Patreon top tier subscribers, 1660 and Patrick Chamberlain. If you can help out on Patreon, or with a direct donation via PayPal, the links are below.